Hi, welcome back to Homeschool Peace. I'm Cassandra. Today I'm talking all about the Good and the Beautiful Energy Science Unit. In this video today, I'm gonna to be doing a walkthrough of this unit, giving you some really great close-ups of the inside of this material, as well as doing a complete full lesson with you so you'll have a really great idea of what is included within this energy unit. This video is part of a collaboration between some other awesome homeschool moms right here on YouTube. I have a playlist that is linked below that has other good and the beautiful science units from these other moms. Check out those videos. You'll also be able to have some flip throughs as well as sample lessons from those moms. This video collaboration was organized by Mommy on the Move YouTube channel, so links all below. But let's go ahead and jump right into this walkthrough. The Energy Science Unit is designed for kindergarten through about eighth grade level students. The Good and the Beautiful takes a one-room schoolhouse approach to science, which is really fun. They like, you can gather all your kids around at the same time and teach the same science topic to all your kids. So for my kids, when we went through this unit, I had a second grader, a kindergartner, and a pre-K student who was more of like a tag-along student. My second grader did really well with this unit. He loved it. He's more my science guy, so it worked really well. For my kindergarten student, she's definitely a little on the younger side. She isn't that into science, so it took a little work to make sure she stayed engaged in the science unit. We've done many different science units from the Good and the Beautiful, and I did find this one a little advanced for that really young kindergarten age level. I did have to break the lessons across multiple days. I made sure to let her opt out of a couple of the harder activities, still doing them with my older child, but you know, maybe letting her take a break when she needed to, as well as just adding some additional YouTube videos in on whatever science topic we were talking about, you know, doing a quick search for whatever energy topic we were on for that day, playing a quick video before we jumped in the lesson. Those extra little videos helped her stay engaged. So I think one of the great things about homeschooling is you can do what works best for your kids. I mentioned that it goes up to eighth grade. Those seventh and eighth grade levels are definitely more extension lessons. So this would be definitely if you had more of that tag along students that are more in the seventh to eighth grade level that you're trying to use the same unit with say multiple children, you can have them join the lessons and there's just some extra say research or some additional um, papers that they get to write and do as part of those lesson extensions. But I would have to say more of the target age on my own opinion is more around say your second grade student up through maybe fifth or sixth grade would fit really well with this science unit. The energy unit has 18 lessons. I mentioned how I had to break those lessons up across multiple days. So most of the lessons took me about three, maybe four school days to get through a lesson. This unit took me more of a full semester to go through it. I did feel it was like packed full of more activities and science experiments. So it just took us a little bit longer. Again, go with the pace of your kids and make sure they're engaged and just go with what works for you. But that's how it went with our family. Going into this um, teacher manual, you'll see right here, we have the read aloud book pack. If you're interested in picking up some extra books, The Good and the Beautiful has the book pack available on their website, so you can get some really a great additional books to add to your lessons. For this unit, I did reference a lot my Usborne Children's Encyclopedia. There's some awesome energy pages right in this book. So I just pulled it out and read it as part of our lessons and it worked really well. I also use my local library. If you have access to a great library, um, I'm sure they probably would have some awesome energy books. So go check that out and bring in library books where you can with your lessons. For the supplies that you need, I'm, um, there were a lot of science experiments or activities as part of the lessons, which is a lot of fun, but there is still things that you really do need to make sure to gather ahead of time. The supply list did cover three different pages of supplies to make sure you have on hand. And some of these things weren't just things that I had just sitting at home. I did have to make sure I went out and picked up the different items for the experiments. So maybe get a box started and just work ahead every few lessons and just start gathering whatever supplies that you need because you definitely don't want to miss out on those great science experiments. If you are new to the Good and the Beautiful science units and you get your packet of information, you're going to get it as a shrink wrapped eight and a half by 11 loose paper package. And you might not know what to do with it or how to organize it. I have a link below of how I put together my science units. Everyone does it a little bit differently. I feel like I keep mine pretty simple. So go check that out if you just need some help. 
In this unit, there are five of these mini books that you'll end up building, and I just staple the side, very simple, laminate the cover, uh, and you'll read these throughout the lessons along with whatever books that you want to bring into your lessons. There is the vocabulary cards. I did feel like this unit had a lot of vocabulary cards compared to some other units that I've done. Um, you know, I think that's a great thing to have, so just make sure that you have a spot to put your vocabulary cards. You could use a trifold board, the back of a door, whatever you have at home, and just stick these vocabulary cards that I have them pre-cut from the lessons right as you go through the vocabulary with your students. They also have some really great activity cards, and I have those laminated ahead, ready to go, and I just keep them in this little pouch. It's a zipper pouch, and I just keep it right into my three-ring binder, and I pull that out as we go through the lessons. So it works really well for us. So I'm going to next jump into an actual lesson so you get a really good idea for a flow of a real lesson. But before I do, if you haven't already, click that subscribe button. It's just down below, so you'll be notified when I do post new video content, but let's go ahead and jump right into that lesson. The lesson I'm going to be going through today is lesson four, and it's all about atoms, molecules, and heat. And in this lesson, you're going to be teaching your children the anatomy of atoms and how molecules are formed. There is a little bit of prep work that you'll wanna do as you'll have these worksheets. You can find these student worksheets right into your teacher material. Go ahead and photocopy those ahead of time. You can have them right into your students' journals. This first one is building an atom, and the second worksheet is what is heat. So have those on hand, as well as some supplies that are needed for the activities, as well as the experiment. Make sure you gather those ahead of time so you're ready to go. The beginning part of the lesson is you're just gonna put blocks out for your kids, and they could be Legos, wooden blocks, whatever you have, and just have your kids start by building a tower. After they have their tower built, you're going to go ahead and pull out this painting. And now this painting is from Alfred Thompson and it's called Lighthouse. And during this activity, you're going to have your kids take a minute and look at this painting. And you can ask them questions like, what do you see? Um, you know, what do you think the lighthouse is made of? You know, and you can explain to them that usually lighthouses are made of stones or bricks, as well as other materials such as wood, glass, and metal. And you can ask the question, could we build the same lighthouse with just, you know, one block, just one brick? Could we? You know, could you have built this tower with, with just one block? And obviously that answer is no. And we're going to talk about how when a builder builds a lighthouse, you cannot, it cannot be done with just one giant piece. You need hundreds or thousands of bricks, boards, and other supplies. Everything on earth is created from a combination of smaller pieces. The rocks, the clouds, the water, and the birds, and everything as represented in this painting are each made of smaller things. And so this is gonna help us understand energy and what makes up the substances on earth. So you can see right here, we're going to be basically connecting the concept of this lighthouse, beautiful painting that we're reviewing, I love how the paintings and art a lot of time is tied into the science units. So you're gonna be taking a look at that and basically explaining how you know we have this little block here and just like a small block makes up a large lighthouse, we also have atoms. You know, atoms are so small that we can't actually see them unless we're using a high powered electron microscopes. But atoms are like those tiny blocks that when they are put together, then they're able to make a larger thing. You know, we look at it from other examples you can point in the room, you know, looking at a table or a chair, you can talk about the food that we eat, the ocean, the air that we breathe, that everything around us is made up of atoms, which then join together to make molecules, which then that's obviously a part of the building blocks of life. And with that, obviously, that every single atom contains energy, and that ties into obviously our energy unit. And I think one thing at this point to note that it's not that we're completely explaining to our kids at their young elementary stage, like each individual um, atom, what those exact molecules are and what molecules make up different substances. But this is more of just that high level explaining how it's such a small part of a, of a you know, a table or a chair, but all those little small atoms is what makes something bigger. And that's what you're really showing and explaining to your kids. From there, you're going to be actually adding a vocabulary word to your vocabulary wall. This could be on a trifold board or you know whatever wall you're putting it on. So we have our vocabulary words energy. So the card we're going to be adding is atoms. 
and you will go ahead and read them to your students. If your students can read, I a lot of times just hand it to whatever child that I know who's at the reading level and I'll just have them read it aloud to everybody. But extremely small particles that are the building blocks of all substances in the universe. So that would be added to there. So then we go ahead and go into a really fun activity that the kids are going to actually start making atoms and molecules. So for this exercise, you're just gonna be giving your students three different colors of Play-Doh. So I have out here, I have a blue, a pink, and a purple. And so you're just gonna ask your kids to just start making three or four small marble size Play-Doh balls. And so they're gonna go ahead and they're first going to be working on their nucleus. So they're gonna have some blue as well as they are going to add, for this one I'm gonna have some pink. And so I go ahead and I, put them together and I'm just telling my kids that this represents the nucleus of the atom. The nucleus of the atom is made up of what's called protons and neutrons. So one of these colors we're gonna say is our protons and the other ones we're gonna call it our neutrons. And again, you're not really going into really explaining the difference or the details of it. It's more you're just building that foundation to explain the building blocks of atoms and molecules. So they'll go ahead and stick their neutrons and protons together and then they're gonna go ahead and set it in the center and we're gonna call that our nucleus. And then you're gonna go ahead and read right from the page. It says this represents, the next one is purple. And you're gonna ask them to start rolling little balls for purple. And you're just gonna say this represents the electrons Although actual electrons would be too small to see in our model, electrons are the part of the atoms that spin on that outside of your nucleus. In the model of the atom you created is very large. Real atoms are actually extremely small. Thousands of um, atoms can fit right here on the tip of a pencil. So you can pull a pencil out and just say thousands of these can fit right here on the tip, just to try to give a little bit of a scale of what we're talking about. But you can go ahead and have your kids stick their electrons around the outside of their nucleus with their protons and their neutrons. At this point, you just ask your kids to gently press all, everything together in just one ball. Though we have spread out the parts of the atom on the build the atom page, the parts of an atom are held together creating one little atom. This ball contains protons, neutrons, and electrons, and they'll represent one atom, and we're we'll, just gonna be using this to the remainder of our lesson. So then again, there's another section to read, is when an atom joins together with one or more other atoms, they become bonded together to create a molecule. And molecules are made up of different types of atoms, the specific types of atoms, the number of atoms, and the arrangement of the atoms in each molecule determines the type of molecule. For example, when two hydrogen atoms join together with one oxygen atom, they form a water molecule. So then the next card that you wanna pull out for your kids is this molecule card, and you can read two or more atoms are bonded together, and that right there is what makes a molecule. So the next part of the lesson is they're going to keep using their atom that they created, and we're gonna have them create a few more, and then we're gonna go ahead and put these together to make a molecule. While your children are going ahead and building their additional atoms, you can obviously bring up some of the concepts that you've already talked about, your protons, your neutrons, your electrons, how this is obviously just representing one of those atoms put together. And so then when they actually have a few of them built and they're um, finishing this up, you're gonna go ahead and give them some toothpicks. And so these toothpicks, you're gonna have them take one of the atoms and hook it together with another atom. And then you're going to go ahead and have them even bring in some of the other ones and tie them, hook them all together with our toothpicks. While you're doing this, you can read that each individual ball represents an atom, but when the atoms are bonded together, so these toothpicks are how I'm bonding it together, when they are bonded together, they represent a molecule. Although molecules are larger than single atoms, they're still extremely small from the nature naked eye. So at the end of the lesson, the children can build their molecule, they can arrange them differently. You know, maybe they'll go ahead and like for this one, I'm going to try to get it to stand up a little bit and have one above it. So maybe you'll have them build it like that or they can arrange it in any way that they wanna do. But just making that concept that you're giving them that foundation that everything around us is 
created by molecules and this is how they are put together. Those atoms are built together and bonded together, which then create our molecules. So the next part of the lesson, I would actually stop here and actually wait till the next day. And then we're going to sort of do a little bit of a review and then jump into some information about molecules and heat. So day two can easily start by a quick review of what you covered yesterday. If you still had some of your Play-Doh um, available, you could go ahead and make an atom for your kids and talk about this is what we did yesterday. But we're gonna jump into talking about atoms, molecules, and how it connects with heat. And so you'll ask your kids the question, what do you think temperature is? And the answer that you'll read to them is that all substances on earth are made up of very small molecules, although you cannot always see the movement. Molecules are always moving. Sometimes molecules move quickly, other times they move slowly. The energy of moving molecules is what we call temperature. The faster the molecules move, the higher the temperature. Substances with slower moving molecules have the lower temperature. And so a really great activity that my kids love to do is it's this move like a molecule activity. So you'll ask your kids to go ahead and stand up. And you'll tell them, okay, I'm going to put a big pot of water on my pretend stove. And you're going to be one of these molecules that are inside my pot of water. And so I'm gonna say, we're going to start by moving really slow. So you'll just have them start moving around the room, maybe sort of touching each other, just moving slow. And I'm going to ask them, you know, what temperature do you think you are right now? Sort of like a slow walk. And if they don't know, you can tell them, we're gonna call this our sort of that lukewarm room temperature water. You're not too hot, not too cold, room temperature. Now you're going to tell them, I'm going to crank up that heat. I'm going to turn up that heat in my big pot. And so now I want you to start moving faster. So the faster the molecules move, the hotter those molecules are. So we're gonna make you hotter. So then this was really fun my kids. They started moving around a little bit more, bumping in a little bit more to each other, just moving around in the room in the space we were at. And so at this point, they should be moving at a much faster pace. And you can point out that their average speed is faster, but they're not all going at the same speed. And so now what we wanna do is tell the kids you're gonna be turning them up to a boiling point. And the children should now be moving around really quick around the room and my kids love this they were just running around moving around the room pretending they were boiling water now I'm gonna turn off that stove and tell the kids since the stove is off the temperature should start decreasing and what do you think is gonna happen if that temperature decreases at this point your kids are gonna be picking up on what you're doing and so they're gonna say oh well, I'm gonna start moving slower so they start moving their pace slower and slower and now you tell them that I'm gonna be taking that giant pot that you're in I'm gonna be sticking it in the freezer and now what's gonna happen? So my kids at first thought, oh, I don't move at all, I'm just frozen. But then you can explain to them that even in a frozen temperature, those molecules are moving, they're moving so slowly, but so they're not completely stopped, but they're slowly, super slow moving, and they actually start clumping together. So you sort of get your kids to clump together and have them slow down. And you can continue doing this activity, pretending what happens whenever the molecules are moving. And this was just a great way to really show molecules as well as what molecules do in relation to heat. And so the next thing we're gonna do is a little bit of a science experiment related right to heat. So I'm gonna get that ready for you to see. Before jumping into that science experiment, I'm gonna pull out this heat card, which I'm gonna to read to my kids. Heat is the energy of moving molecules. The hotter the substance is, the faster those molecules are gonna be moving. For the colder the substance is, the slower those molecules are gonna be moving on average. Then after that, I'm gonna go ahead and show this during a science experiment. And so with this, I have a cup filled with very hot water. I have a cup that I'm going to keep completely empty and a cup that has cold water in it. This relates to the work sheet that we have right here called what is heat and you're going to have your kids go ahead and take some colored maybe pencils or markers and go ahead with a pencil and draw and use the colors to show what they're going to be seeing in this experiment so right here we have hot 
mixed and cold. So to start this off, you're going to have your kids touch the outside of the containers. Now, obviously be careful with the hot one. You don't want them to burn their fingers, but you know, make sure they sort of get their finger near it so they can sort of just feel the heat coming off of this cup. And then they can touch this one and feel that cold water as well. And so you're going to say that you're going to take some red food dye. And what they're going to be watching for is we know that molecules move faster when they're hotter. So, you know, you could ask them ahead of time, what do you think is going to happen? And, you know, maybe they'll be able to give a good guess, but, you know, since the substance is going to be moving, the molecule is moving faster, obviously there's going to be a higher chance that my hot water is going to mix this red food dye in faster than if I'm going to be using the blue in my cold water, but we're going to see what happens. So you're going to go ahead and drop just maybe like three drops of red food coloring um, into this cup, and we're going to drop three in to the cold water, but you're gonna to try to do it at the same time or you could have your kids help you because it is really nice to be able to see the difference and be able to compare the two as they drop. So here we go. We're gonna drop three in, one, two, and three. So just taking a look at this instantly, I can see that my red food dye is definitely spreading out faster. It's spread around the cup or inside of the cup versus my cold one pretty much just sank. It went right to the bottom and I can sort of see where it's sort of following a little bit, but it's pretty much just staying at the bottom of the cup. I can still see uh, clear water through the blue food coloring. On this side, I can actually see that it's pretty much all red. Um, I can see a little bit of the clear at the bottom, but in just a few seconds, you can see that the red mixed faster. So you, after your kids observe this, you obviously want to ask them, you know, why do you think this red coloring, the hot one, why do you think it mixed faster than our blue one? Because our blue is still sitting here and it's not mixed. And it goes back to that same card that we just talked about, how that those hot molecules, the molecules that with a hot substance, they're moving around faster. And so it's actually mixing the substance while it's in the cup. So they can go ahead and take their you know colored pencil on their worksheet and maybe they'll go ahead and draw that the you know the red really mixed well while maybe on their blue they'll color it that it's you know a little bit at the top it dri drips down and then it's really heavy on the bottom and that'll help them remember it if you have some older kids that are able to write they can write some notes as well in these sections of what actually happened and, you know add a sentence or two to the paper all right so the next part of this activity is now we're going to you know touch the side of the cup again not again not to burn yourself but just sort of so we remember this one's our hot one this one's our cold one and so now we're going to actually mix these two together in this empty cup that I have right here. So I'm going to read to them that whenever two substances come together by touching or mixing, the heat within the higher temperature substance will move to the lower temperature substance. This transfer of energy is heat. As the heat energy is shared, the molecules within the two substances will reach an equilibrium. Equilibrium means that the molecules in both substances have reached a balance and the heat energy is eventually distributed through the water. So we're gonna be able to see that. There's also a equilibrium card you can pull out for your vocabulary, the condition where forces or other influences on a system are in balance. So we're gonna go ahead and mix these two together. I'm gonna do one at a time. So I'm gonna have some of my hot, and then I'm going to, let me sort of stir this first, switch it around a little more. There we go. And now I'm gonna mix my cold in. There we go. And if I keep doing this, I'm eventually just gonna come up with like more of that purple color. And so then what you want your kids to do is obviously, I still have a little bit of red here. They can touch the hot here. They can touch this one. If I'm touching this one, it feels definitely more that lukewarm room temperature. And I touch this one and it's cold. And so then from there, you can say, how does this relate to what we just saw? When the hot water molecules came in contact with the cold molecules, they uh, transferred some of their energy to the cold molecules. This transfer of energy happens until all the water molecules have reached that equilibrium and the heat energy was eventually distributed. So again, you can go ahead and have your kids go back to this sheet and they can go in that mixed section and they can go and color that in 
and they can write some notes to save in their science journal. All right, the very last thing that I can point out in this science lesson is that lesson extension. So this uh, worksheet is right inside your material. And so you can go ahead and read to your older students or have them read the information. They're going to be learning a little bit about a scientist as well as um, some information about heat and work. And they have also um, some things that they can do in their science journals as well. So it's just those little bit of extra things that you can do with your older students students when going through these science experiments. I hope this was helpful going through the science unit together and really getting a good feel of, of layout of one of the lessons. If you have any questions at all, please leave those questions below. I'd love to be able to help you out. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you do get notified when I do post new content. And last, check out that playlist of all the other homeschool moms who've come together to be able to share some of these science units. There's some really great things out there that you can be able to see those lesson materials as well as doing a lesson with other homeschool moms. So I hope this was helpful and I will talk to you soon. Goodbye.